Hey y'all, Coach and Fight, you got Chris with me. Hey y'all. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about climate change, in particular, the drought. Uh, it's been a drought, for sure. Well, we're gonna be talking about why we're in that drought. Okay. And explaining some of this heat. Mm -hmm. Sure is hot, huh? Very, 100 degrees every day. Well, praise the Lord, it's not that hot this day because I believe we're gonna have to kill the fan for the sake of the video. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's go ahead. We won't make them suffer through our fan. We'll, we'll suffer the heat. All right. So we're here at Google and we're looking, doing just a quick search for um, drought in the year 2023. Right. And I think it tells us what we already know, right? Mm -hmm. Even Alabama now, which, you know, we've escaped a lot of this drought even in our own house. We are now suffering a drought here, right. Right? considering water and trees and stuff that we like to see survive the tribulation. Yeah, they're starting to turn yellow out there. And they're starting to leaves are falling off the tree um, as if it's the fall. Mm -hmm. Except the leaves are not brown, they're still green. And, but anyway, in this video, we're going to look at the reasons why this is. Okay. We're going to talk about why this is because you know, you hear people talking about climate change this and climate change that. Right. You know, of course, the government has their um, ideas of why the climate is changing. Mm -hmm. And then there are those who oppose that idea of why the climate is changing. You know, the government says it's CO2. And then everybody else says, no, nah, that can't be the case. It's not CO2. Mm -hmm. So you have these two opposing sides. Well, there is a third side. And mm -hmm. that is what the Bible has to say. So that's what we're going to look at. Let's come over here and let's look in Deuteronomy chapter 11 because we want to see why there is such a thing as a drought in the first place. Let's look at some of these verses. We're not going to look at all of them, but we'll let you read them. Deuteronomy 11 and 1. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments. Always. So we, we are in chapter 11, and he's talking about his judgments, his commandments, his statutes. Right. Same thing we saw over there in Malachi chapter um, 4, the last chapter in the Old Testament. He brings these up again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just pointing to the significance. All right, let's come down to the next verses. 8 and 9. Therefore shall ye keep the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong. And go in and possess the land, whether thee shall go possess it. And that ye may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them, and to, to their seed, a land that floweth with milk and honey. So here you have again, he's talking about these commandments right. in this chapter. And the reason why we're jumping ahead like this is because this is a long chapter. He covers a lot of stuff. But we want to stress how he's talking about these commandments, these judgments, and these statutes. Right. All right, let's go on to our next passage. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So if you would do this stuff, and like you said, if is the biggest statement in the Bible, most important right. word in the Bible. That I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that ye mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. So here's this if statement saying that if we keep these commandments, what does it say? If ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command thee this day. This is Moses, of course, speaking here, right. telling us that if we do this, then we will get rain in due season. Mm -hmm. So here we are in a drought. You're not getting that. Yet. So because we're not doing what it says here. Right. You know, uh, based on the weather conditions, we can safely say that humanity as a whole, at least under these drought conditions, humanity as a whole is not diligently hearkening unto his commandments. Right. In other words, we're not doing what he say. You know, but let's go on. Fifteen. And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Yeah, so if, if we were to, you know, this is our promises of the Bible. This is why we do this, so that right. we can learn, so we can have this um, this help with agriculture, so we can have some heat and protections from the heat. Mm -hmm. But let's look at 16. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, 
and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. So here, here is the alternative. If we're not going to hearken, but we're actually going to turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, and that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, lest ye perish quickly off the good land which the Lord giveth you. So he's going to turn your land into a desert. Right. If, you, if we don't somehow get back in his good graces, he's telling us here that we have to, you know, hearken unto the commandments and the statutes and the judgments. You know, basically, Exodus chapter 20, chapter 21, chapter 22, and chapter 23. That's the book right. of the covenant. But he's telling us that we have to hearken unto those four chapters and every word it says from the Ten Commandments to the angel of the, the, the apocalypse. Every word it says we have to hearken unto that. And if we do do that, you know, and put these sins away from us, then we will get this rain back even after heaven has been shut up. Right. These are the biblical instructions. If we don't follow these instructions, then he says that the heavens will be shut. Right. There will be no rain. And here we are today where, you know, you know, people rarely even know about the statutes. Right. You know, I was doing a search earlier today and you know how Google helps you out. Mm -hmm. Well, I was doing a search earlier today and I left out one letter that, and, and, and I was surprised that Google didn't mention anything about Passover. Mm. Normally it tries to help you out, but it's coming, it doesn't. And so it's not even allowing us to see this kind of stuff on accident. Right. So if you don't know about Passover, it's Google, not going to help you find it. Yeah. And so most of society have no idea what this is all about, what Passover is all about. Passover is one of these statutes he's talking about that we have to hearken unto. Right. These statutes are how we serve our father. And if we aren't keeping these statutes, we're not serving our father. So he's not going to give us the help in return. No, 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 no. That's not what it's saying here. This is saying that if we go on to serve other gods. Oh, okay. So while we're, it's one thing not to keep his statutes. It's one thing not to keep his statutes. It's another thing to go keep the other guy's statutes. Right. Well, that's what's shut in heaven. You know, that's what has heaven shut. That's why we have, that's why we're in this drought. So, like it says, if you serve the Lord, then you'll get rain in due season. But if you serve a false God, then you won't get any at all. Right. And so in between, you'll get rain. It just won't be at the time you need it. Right. Right. And then, absolutely, that's a good point. So you won't be in a complete drought, but your crops won't be flourishing, you know, and you right. won't, be getting, we won't be getting that abundant crop. Right. You, you, you know, everything will be green. But, you know, you won't be getting oh, more than you need, more yeah. than you want. Yeah, that bumper crop that if you, you know, was a watered garden. Mm -hmm. Well, if we keep his statutes, he'll water our garden. Right. But if we if we don't, we can't expect all of this, this abundance. But if we go as far as to serve the other guy, well, we're going to turn off to speak it all together. Mm -hmm. And that be the case here in the year 2023. But let's go on. Let's finish up this in Deuteronomy. 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. So this reminds us of um, the mark of our Father. Right. right. That we hear about, you know, keeping his statues. Of course, that, that involves keeping unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Passover gives us the, the mark of our Father. And then it also should remind us of the mark of the beast, which is the exact opposite. Right. So what we can imply from this verse here is if that we don't bind these up on our hands, then we could possibly have the mark of the beast on our hands, especially if we're keeping the, the pagan holidays, we have the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. But that's like, like we were saying earlier, it's one thing to keep his Sabbath days, and it's another thing to keep the other guy's Sabbath days. Let's go on. We want to go on and look in Second Peter, talking about climate change, because this is New Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, we got this warning back there in the Old Testament saying, hey, if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. And then we look here in Second Peter and let's see what he has to say there. In Second Peter, chapter three, verse nine. The Lord isn't slow about keeping his promises, as some people may think he is. In fact, God is patient because he wants everyone to turn from sin and no one to be lost. That's why there's a, an exact day that this is all going to go down. And we're all given the opportunity to prepare for that day. Right. 
The day of the Lord's return will surprise us like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a loud noise and the heat will melt the whole universe. Then the earth and everything on it will be seen for what they are. Yeah, well, in other translations, it doesn't say whole universe. It talks about the, the um, elements in the sky. And this. But what it's saying here is that it's, we're going to burn. This is the pole shift. This is the, what do they call it, the solar flare. This, right. yeah. and, but notice how it's saying here that the heavens will disappear. Mm -hmm. That's going to strip part of our atmosphere away, right. leaving us more exposed to the sun, more exposed to this. Furnace. Yeah, and that's what's going to, you know, um, scorch the earth, right? And that's what's going to cause, you know, what they say, everything to burn, right. kind of like what we saw over there in Maui, except now it's not just one little island, but the whole world will suffer this. This is the great day of the Lord that we hear about. The cleansing. And the cleansing, um, praise our Father in heaven, it sounds like it's a very short period of time, maybe even 24 hours, but it is the night of the storm, and that's 24 hours is going to change the world. Mm -hmm. Like it says, everything will be destroyed. Man, this is what we're expecting. This is, you know, why a lot of people don't want to see this. This is because a lot of our luxury items will be going away with mm -hmm. this as well. You that's know. your Lexus melting in the parking lot. Uh, So what do we do about this? I mean, the Bible told us this was coming. It obviously, should have told us what we should do about it. So as we start to change gears in that direction, finding out what we should do, and I advise you guys to stick around to the end. We have some instruction here. Um, let's go over to uh, Second Chronicles to hear what Solomon was talking about, because Solomon mentioned the rain in his prayer. You remember that prayer Solomon did there in um, chapter six? Yeah, where he, so. yeah, it was a, a long prayer. You can read it, and you know after the video, but he, he prayed about a lot of stuff. One of the things he mentioned was rain there in verse twenty-six. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter six, verse twenty-six. When the heaven is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, yet if they pray towards this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them. Okay, so this is Solomon. He's, he's, he's making this prayer saying, okay, Father, I'm dedicating this temple. Let's make this temple special. So anytime somebody says a prayer, if they was to turn towards this temple and pray, add extra power to him, basically is what Solomon is saying. Yeah. But he does speak on this part about shutting up heaven and there being no rain. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're going to hear his response to that. Let's look at verse 27 first, though. Then hear thou from heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk, and send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. So if we turn away from our sin, if we confess thy name, after this heaven has been shut up, Solomon is asking for our father to, to bless them. And bring the rain. They bring the rain. He's trying to, but you know, Solomon's point is he's making emphasis on this temple. Hmm. So let's go see what the father has to say. You know, that's a little bit confusing. We're going to go to the next chapter, starting down here in about verse 12. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place. To myself for a house of sacrifice okay so he he's heard this prayer and he's chosen a place like you said the place is not really going to matter Go ahead. if i shut up heaven that there be no rain or if i command the locusts to devour thy land or if i send pestilence among my people if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If the people that are called by his name. So not even everybody. Yeah, just those that are called. Yeah, just the just the chosen few. Very few people, you know, here. If these people were to turn, you know, and humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, then he will hear and forgive the sin and will heal the land. In other words, we're gonna get this rain. All right. So what does this look like? You know? Well, it looks like he's telling us how to get back 
where we're supposed to be. Right. And with the main part being here is this forgiveness of sins. Right. Because we can have something to do with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we actually learn over here in Mark that we get through forgiveness of sins through baptism. Mm -hmm. So what he's telling, if we're putting everything together so far, he's telling us is that if his people were to cleanse themselves, which we learn over here in Mark and we learn over here in Luke chapter 3 and verse 3 and down here in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, that is that it is baptism that we are forgiven of our sins. Right. So if his people were to get rebaptized again, because you know the first baptism was defiled when we, you know, broke his commandments, we dirted ourselves up again. So we got to get cleaned up again. Many of us not understanding the significance of that. Right. It didn't tell us that we had to stay clean, or that we were getting clean. So we get baptized again, and then we get the forgiveness of this sin. Right. And you know, and of course, we don't want to, you know, stain ourselves anymore. So we read the covenant and finding out what we're supposed to do. Like we said, it's Exodus chapter twenty, chapter twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-three, four chapters. Mm -hmm. Understanding what our Father expects of us; those are the rules that we're playing by. You know, and we're getting penalized for going out of bounds just because we don't know where the out of bounds lines are. Don't mean we're not going to lose the ball, right? So we read that scripture to find out where the rules are. And then we, we, we we're allowed to cleanse ourselves up through this baptism. And then what we find over here in the book called the Epistle of Barnabas is this forgiveness of sins allows us to go back into a state where we are acceptable to our father. In other words, he gets to make our bodies his dwelling place, the third temple. Right. So this is in construction of the third temple. So here is the choices here. I'm glad I, I almost forgot about this verse. This is what we read back here in Deuteronomy 11. Matter of fact, go ahead and read. Deuteronomy 11, verse 27. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day, and to go after other gods which ye have not known. So here is this choice. We can have the kingdom. Right. Or we can have the curse. Or which is that drought. Right. And look what we're choosing now. And it's not surprising, you know, that we're choosing this. Yeah, I don't I don't mean to pick on, you know, the the, the, the presidents or you know, anything like that. He's just a figurehead. I understand he's doing his job. But when we go back and listen to President and Jill Biden. In 2022, during the White House Easter egg roll, mm -hmm. which is like we know, the serving the mother God. Yeah. That's, that's what that is all about. Look at what the president said. His the first words out of his mouth. It starts off, Mr. President, call him. These are the first words out of his mouth. So he clearly he accepts his applause and read what he says. My job is to keep it from raining. As he chuckles for another two minutes. So why do you think he's talking about stopping the rain? A break in the rain is needed for him to do this ceremony. Ah. I mean, otherwise it doesn't make sense. You know, it, it doesn't make sense for him to talk about rain when it's not raining. Right. Or even hasn't ah. rained that day, because he says the next two minutes. Mm -hmm. So they're getting an abundance of rain when this speech is made in 2022. And then you look at us here in 2023. In a drought covering half the country, half the world. The first words out of his mouth after his after we hear Happy Easter, he says that his job is to keep it from raining. And how does the president of the United States keep it from raining? Keep the people in sin. That's to water down. We have to be very, we're being very specific here. We're, we're, we're answering the drought. I was talking to a pastor the other day, and that was her response: sin. But that's general sin. You know what I mean? So you you can't say because I steal something that we're going to be in a drought. But it's, you, but it's the serving of these other gods. Right. And so that's what he's talking about here. This is an Easter thing. And if you remember that speech, they educated us on Easter. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, you know, his wife is an educator. And, you know, that was her job to be there to do this. Like I said, I'm not blaming these people, you know, for this. You know, we're not fighting against print. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against principalities and powers. Right. And so these people are doing their job. And her job was to educate the public on the worship of this particular false god. Right. 
because the president is just a good Catholic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I don't think he's a theologian. He's going to come across as a Bible expert to me. So just like the rest of the people in the Catholic world, the religious world, he's just doing what he believes or what he's taught from the Pope. Right, right. Well, if you look what the Pope did in the previous month, uh, back there in 22, he is dealing the same thing. You know, talking about the rain. No, talking about dedicating the Russia-Ukraine war to this deity, to this oh, yeah. other god, this this one here. The mother of God? But you have to know exactly who they're talking about. Right. You know, first impression you think they're talking about the mother of our Messiah. Right. But that that's not what it says. Right. Right. Matter of fact, if we can come over here and look at this document here um, that explains who it is that they're talking about here. This is at the official Vatican website talking mm -hmm. about the rosary. Right. But I tell you what we'll do. We'll just play a video that Stacy and I did earlier, you know, explaining what's what they're doing here. Okay was the cause of the sky cracking in 1883 mm -hmm. and announcing uh, this great and terrible day of the Lord that we're in now. Mm -hmm. But as I was searching around trying to find out other significant events that happened in 1883, I stumbled upon this so-called devotion of the rosary. Right. But anyway, let's skim down through here and let's pull out some fun facts from this so-called own devotion of the rosary. Okay. The Supreme Apostolic Office, which we discharge in the exceedingly difficult conditions of these times, daily warn and almost compel us to watch carefully over the integrity of the Church. The more that the calamities from which she suffers are greater, while therefore we endeavor in every way to preserve the rights of the Church and to obviate or repel present or continuing dangers, we constantly seek for help from heaven, the sole means of effecting anything, that our labors and our care may obtain their wished for object. Okay, so this is kind of a prayer. Right. Okay, and I think a lot of people think of that when they hear the word rosary, they think of the prayer mm -hmm. of the rosary. Mm -hmm. So even the people with these beads may not be familiar with where that all came from. Mm -hmm. And so that's what this document is all about. So let's continue. We deem that there could be no sure and more effectuous mean to this end by any religion and piety to obtain the favor of the great Virgin Mary, the mother of God, the guardian of our peace, and the minister to us of heavenly grace, who is placed on the highest summit of power and glory in heaven, in order that she may bestow the help of her patronage on men who through so many labors and dangers are striving to reach that eternal city. Now, this was the first thing that jumped out at me when I was skimming through this document was how it refers to her as the mother of God. Mm -hmm. Not the mother of the Messiah, but mm -hmm. actually the mother of God, who we know as our Heavenly Father, how mm -hmm. it be his name. So this would actually put her in a higher position than him. Yeah, and then it says, who is placed on the highest summit of power and glory in heaven. Yeah, so that puts her in the highest position in heaven. Yeah, right? that seems to what, be what is reading, yeah. Absolutely, and it is actually going to say this more in different ways. Let's go on. Now that the anniversary, therefore, of manifold and exceedingly great favors obtained by a Christian people through the devotion of the rosary is at hand, we desire that the same devotion should be offered by the whole Catholic world with the greatest earnestness to the Blessed Virgin, that by her intercession, her divine son may be appeased and softened to the evils which afflict us. Right, so this is kind of strange here, mm -hmm. how these this document is asking the Catholic Church or the Universal Church or the Christian world to actually pray with the highest veneration to the Virgin Mary, asking her to tell her son, who we know as our Messiah, to let up off of us a little bit. What does it say? Yeah, so that her peace. divine son may be appeased and softened mm -hmm. in the evils mm -hmm. which affect us. So this is saying, first of all, that the evils that affect us are generated from the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we ought to pray to this Virgin Mary to ask him to stop. Yeah. Yeah. That's really strange. 
But anyway, let's go on. And therefore we determine, venerable brethren, to dispatch to you these letters in order that, informed of our designs, your authority and zeal might excite the piety of your people to confirm themselves to them. So they're venerating this Mary to the highest position, even in heaven. Yeah, a position higher than the most high. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's look at verse 2. It has always been the habit of Catholics in danger and in troublous times to fly for refuge to Mary and to seek for peace in her maternal goodness, showing that the Catholic Church has always and with justice put all her hope and trust in the mother of God. Okay, wow. again, it's talking about this mother of God, but notice how it's saying that, that this Catholic Church has put all mm -hmm. of their hope in the mother of God, this mother of God. Yeah, you know, we read this yesterday, and I don't know if I saw all of this. But yeah, yeah, yeah. they're saying that who, who we always have put all of our hope, not some of our hope or portion, but all of our hope in someone other than the Most High. Yeah, and notice that part right there where it says always, mm -hmm. right? So we recognize that the Virgin Mary came into existence around the same time as our Messiah here in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So how it is that they always worship this Virgin Mary even before the Messiah was born, well, I guess we'll find out when we get into the scripture. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see where all of this is coming from. Anyway, let's go ahead. And truly, the Immaculate Virgin, chosen to be the mother of God, and thereby associated with him in the work of man's salvation, has a favor and power with her son greater than any human or angelic creature has ever obtained or ever can gain. How, now, how do they get this? When the one reference that we have in the Bible, when the interaction between Mary and her son was when, you know, they lost him in the mm -hmm. temple at 12 years old. And when they found him, and seemingly ready to chastise him, the Messiah put Mary in her place mm -hmm. and said he was out handling his father's business. But according to this document, it seems as if they're, they have equal power. Yeah, equal, equal power. Favor. Right. Well, let's go on. And as it is her greatest pleasure to grant her help and comfort to those who seek her, it cannot be doubted that she would deny and even be anxious to receive the aspirations of the universal church. Now, we reference the Third Testament of the Bible. And in the Third Testament of the Bible, what we found is that just as the Messiah was the incarnate of the Word, in other words, he was the Word made flesh, mm -hmm. we find out that his mother, Mary, was the incarnation of the Holy Spirit. Right. So this universal mother, who we recognize as Mary, does deserve our veneration. Right. But again, the question is, is that who the Catholic Church is talking about? Right. Is, is the same one we call the Mother Mary, is this who they are referring to as this Mother of God? Okay. Is this the same being? Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go on to three. This devotion, so great and so confident to the August Queen of Heaven, has never shown forth with such brilliancy as when the militant church of God has seemed to be endangered by the violence of heresy spread abroad or by an intolerable moral corruption or by the attacks of powerful enemies. Now, when I first read this or first listened to it, it was a YouTube uh, video that, that reads this. Um, I stopped here because I seem to remember this queen of heaven and that didn't ring out as our mother Mary to me. Mm -hmm. So I went in and did a Bible search for the Queen of Heaven. And what we find is over in the book of Jeremiah, it's mentioned five times, mm -hmm. but not in a good light. Right. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, go ahead and read Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18. Okay. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the woman knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. So here is our first significant hint that this is not actually our mother Mary. This is not actually the mother of the Messiah that they're actually worshiping, that they're calling the queen of heaven or that they're calling the mother of God. This is actually a whole nother God. This is another deity that they're actually worshiping here. Right, because for one, it's found in the book of Jeremiah 
and that is an Old Testament book. Yeah, and this kind of goes back to you know what it said at first is how they always right. mm -hmm. have gone to the queen of heaven or gone to the mother of God, even before the Messiah existed. Well, we see here that Jeremiah was talking about it way back then, how these who we now know as Catholics were worshiping the queen of heaven, even back then, mm -hmm. as they were worshiping the other gods, mm -hmm. making sacrifices to these other gods. Right. So that's definitely not our universal mother. Right. It's not the, the Holy Spirit. It's right. not the mother of our Messiah. This is a, a whole, pagan God. Yes, yeah, a whole another deity that is definitely, they're using the sacrifices and offerings that they have um, to give to her to anger the Most High. Absolutely. So here you have this official document. This is the, like... I don't want to call it the oath or whatever that they take, but this is what they're doing. They're talking about the Catholic world or the Christian world, I should right. say. Um, they do it through this uh, so-called queen of heaven, while, you know, the Protestants do it through uh, Easter or whatever, same, same deity. Right, right. What you have in 2022 uh, is the Pope commanding for lack of a better word, the entire Christian world mm -hmm. to bow down to this queen of heaven. Yeah. So that's why we have a drought. Because that's, they're serving other gods. And you add that, this whole 2022 thing, and you know, you have the president and you have the pope who are, you know, taking the world to this extreme of idolatry Right. Along with the fact that in 2023 we're in a sabbatical year mm -hmm. when nobody should be planting ah. or harvesting any crops or anything, why do we need rain? Ah. And then it's followed by the Jubilee year ah. when we also have ah. no need of rain. Right. This is the perfect storm. This, you know, you add all of these things together, and here you have people who are working ah. against the rain and people who shouldn't need the rain. And his children are not doing what it takes to get the rain. Right. Like you said, it's the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. It's getting pretty dusty out there. It seems like it's going to be a sandstorm. But here's our way out of it. Like you said, all it takes is for his people to turn away from their sin, turn away from their wickedness. And to start keeping these feast days. Right. And start with the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Many of us are... are, are um, new to the faith and so one of the things we have to learn is the importance of the sabbath day and you know so while we're doing that people just really need to just take a rest understanding that it's all about um rest and serving our father and then after that we start to mind these feast days which are the statutes all right start to mind the commandments which like we said is exodus chapter 20 start to mind these uh judgments which is uh, Exodus chapter 21 and 22. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about the statues there in chapter 23. But when we start to do this, then he will, like you say, we'll heal our land and we'll start to get some rain. Right. Grasp our cattle and the milk and honey. Absolutely. The promises of the Bible, you know, and, and we have instructions for it. If we want this milk and honey, we're going to have to do these commands, statutes, and judgments. All right. So with all of this, Let's go back and let's look at these verses very carefully. This answer to this prayer. Our father's words to Solomon as Solomon was trying to get us a way out of these droughts. Mm -hmm. We see here in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. But like I said, let's look very closely at these verses. Read verse 14 and then we're going to break this down. However, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, search for me, and turn from their evil ways. Then I will hear their prayer from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their country. And of course, he's talking about the rain here, like we see back there in verse 13. If you were, if there was to be no rain, if we were to be in a drought, this is what he says that his people have to do. Right. But like I said, let's look more closely at this. Let's even look at more translations here to make sure we understand what he's saying. Because in the KJV, it says to humble thyself. But what exactly does that mean? 
How do you do that? Would that be by understanding what we did wrong? Down here in the DRA, it says to be converted. And that's what I was thinking, that this is baptism. Hmm. Yeah. We are basically cleaning ourselves up, taking us out of this arrogant state, so to speak, presumptuous, you know, thinking we can do anything. Right. Basically putting us back in a cleansed state is what it means to be humble. But then down here in the GNT, it says to repent. Right. Which is along the same lines. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about the forgiveness or of these sins. Right. And then it says to pray. Right. So this is something we're going to have to do after we've humbled ourselves, after we've cleaned ourselves up. You know, now we're prayer talking about the children of Israel. Because mm -hmm. you, you remember, he, he said not everybody had to do this. Right. Just he said the ones who he called. Just his people have to do this. So if we all are praying. And we're going to look at verse 15 here. But if we're all praying in this humble state, then he's going to have to hear our prayers. Right. Well, let's not forget this other part, this third part here where it says to seek his face. So how do we seek his face? Well, we're looking here at these other translations here. KJV says, seek my face. But look down here in the CEV. It says, turn back to me and stop sinning. Right. The ERV says, look for me and turn away from their evil ways. Right. Mm -hmm. So does the GNV says, turn from their wicked ways. So to me, this sounds like reading and understanding his covenant. Mm -hmm. Going in and reading the, the book like we've been talking about, the four chapters in Exodus 20 through 24, that explains exactly which rules were being held accountable for. Right. You know, that is the book of the law, mm -hmm. the covenant that we all signed back there at the base of Sinai. Absolutely. That is a contract. So what he's saying is if we were to do these three things, then he will forgive our sins and heal our land. Right. And then if we come back here and look at verse 15, I think it's important to note. Because it's saying that if we are to pray at this place. Mm -hmm. Right. The KJV says in this place, right? but that can't be right. Because if, if that were true, that means we would all have to trek to Jerusalem mm -hmm. to get into a temple that is even no longer there mm -hmm. to make this prayer of supplication for rain. Right. So that's impossible. Yeah. So, so with careful study, we see in other places that this word is used to say to this place instead of in this place, which was what Solomon prayed for. Right. That if they prayed towards Jerusalem, towards the temple, then he would hear their prayer or hear our prayer. So that's what our father is saying back there in verse 15. If we are to pray at this place or towards the temple, mm -hmm. then our his eyes would be open and he would um, hear our prayers and heal our land. So we have our marching orders here. Yeah, I think it's great that, you know, well, do I think it, it's great that he leaves all of this up to us? Like you always said, if is one of the biggest words in scripture, and he's giving us the opportunity by saying, if we do these things. So, you know, there's no way we can blame him because he is fully putting the ball in our court. And yeah, we got to pick it up and run with it. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to have to score with this one, guys, because water is essential. And there are forces that's trying to take this water away, obviously. But we have to recognize and remember the mission of these chosen elect. These people who have been trained all these many years have the power of controlling the elements, he told us. Even gave us the example of that. Well, now we have the instructions for doing just that. Humbling ourselves, seeking out his face or, or figuring out how it is we can o obey his will. And then praying towards the east, particularly for this rain. And what does he say? Not only will he give us this rain, but he says he will heal our land or heal our country. All right. right. So it's time to take action, guys. Let's do this. This. There's a few people who watches these videos. And so we can count on each other to do just this. Let's all take these necessary actions, including praying towards the temple. And no one is insignificant, you know, because... No one knows, if I'm saying this right, Coach, who 144 is. Um, everybody should 
play their own part. You know, you just can't leave it up and, and to the other person to say, well, they're going to do it. You have a part to play in this as well. And it doesn't say anything about the 144 in here. He just says the people that are called by his name. So okay. this is everybody. Right. So our numbers very well could be higher. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things we can do to ensure that is actually sharing this video. Right. You know, because this is big. We, we're going to have to take action here, else the enemy is going to win. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Forcing us to do things to feed our family that would be otherwise against our Father's will. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And, the you know, the, the water, the healing of the land, the rain, it affects everybody. Right. You can't say that this doesn't affect me because it affects everyone. This is what we have to do. Yeah, you know, now we know. So now it's time to do it. So we're going to go ahead and close this video out. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and say a prayer. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father Abba, we come to you today, Lord, asking that you will heal our land, Lord, that you will let us know what we have to do as a people to humble ourselves, to be of this repentant heart, Lord, so that we can learn to seek your face and turn away from our evil ways, Father that we may be forgiven of these sins. Father, we, we ask that you will help us in this way because we need our land to be healed. Father, we, we, we are in a little bit of trouble here with this water as our crops start to dry up and our animals start to suffer from no water. We ask, Father, that you will show us what we have to do as your people called by your name so that we can help not only ourselves, but we can help our community as well as our country. In Yahshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so be it.